what we have here is a piece of Norway maple. This was given to me by Dave from Calmwood Creations. He happens to live in the same town I do. He's on the other side of the river. And back in September, I had an opportunity to go visit him. And he gave me this piece of wood, along with some other wood that I will eventually get to in turn. It was pretty green. This is fairly green, I think, when he gave it to me, but it, it looks okay now. So I've marked a circle about like that. I'll be right back after I get it cut. So I've uh, decided this is going to be the top, even though I'm missing a little bit here. Uh, I plan on a shape that that's going to disappear. But the bottom has got this real punky wood here, and I need to be able to turn that away. So we're going to get it mounted up and start to create something. Okay, I think I got about 580, not even that. I'm just going to get it round now so I can go faster. And I've got my mask and face shield on. So let's round this up. That's just about round. Now you see we got to get rid of this. So it's going to get a bit shorter. Well, that's real nice. That's a, that's a little kind of punky wood here. We can deal with it. That's real nice. So I'm kind of looking at that crack and I think I can get rid of a little bit more of it. And I want to do a small design change right here anyways. I have this coming like that. I'm thinking about bringing it up more square. Got my half inch bowl gouge here and we'll see what we can do by trimming that up. I made this video about two and a half weeks ago. I was coughing, sneezing, and wheezing. Please excuse the sound effects. Okay, I like it. Just a little bit is all it took. So I've shortened this. I'll go a little bit deeper for this tenon. Right now, I'll go back to doing some sanding off camera. And uh, I'll be back and we'll finish that tenon. Pretty much have all of this sanded. I reshaped this a little bit. I've cut a tenon on here. I put a little recess there. I'm going to use my larger jaws just because this wood is maybe not the most stable in the world. I want to get a good grip on it with that dovetail feature on those jaws. I'm going to go ahead and get it out. I haven't really sanded this side because I may still do a little bit of shaping on that. Or may not, but I can still reach it and sand it. So we'll get it off the wood screw. Okay, one more little twist now. I, I don't have any adjustment left there that fits as close as you want them to get. Almost closer than I want them to get. They better not loosen up. That's all I got to say. Let's see how it runs without this tail stock in the way, just for curiosity. That's not not too bad. I can get it right back up to where it runs smooth at 1300. Okay, we'll leave the tailstock against it 
and I gotta decide what else I want to do here. Maybe I'll do some more sanding that I wanted to do and call it a day. Go about 300, 350. This wood was pretty rough, but I think I can get it sanded. I got the other side done. That's enough for now. I got to put my dust hood up here and, and do the rest of the sanding on this. Boy, this is going to be nice. Really going to be nice. Well, I got it all sanded up. Got a freshly sharpened 5 8 bowl gouge, and I'm turning this at 1500 RPMs. I have a set screw in here and we'll get set up and we'll cut on this side for a while. Alright, I'm going to use my hollowing tool to get this started. Alright, I need to get, whew, get an idea of what uh, I have for a wall here. And I got quite a bit to go. Let's go down about another half inch. Okay, I think I can get set up. Come back to this side. This just give me a nice start. All right, we'll get some more of this bulk out of here. I'm gonna use a half inch bowl gouge now. So right now this uh, has a pretty nice wall thickness. I'm going to leave it that way as well. This block here needs to come off and right at the bottom of it, it's pretty close to what I want for my bottom. So I know where that's at. I just need to cut this away. So I'm going to grab my 5 8 bowl gouge and we're going to remove this and we might be close to blending and sanding. 1700 RPMs. So right there. That's about a half, and I have about a eighth inch or so recess, so I think we're finished cutting here. Let's just clean this up. 
and then get ready to sand. I'm going to get some of this stuff out of my way and have a better look at it. Well, I'm ready to sand the inside, and once that's done, we can get a finish on it. This probably looks a little bit different than when you saw it last, but I had a flat spot in here where I hadn't finished flattening that out. I decided just to do that and then get to the sanding, but I got carried away, and I reshaped that from that flat spot up to right about there. I just softened it. So I'm going to sand this two inch disc starting with 80. It's got some torn out grain and some punky wood. It's going to be really dusty and I've got my hood over here. I'm going to turn the dust collector on here shortly but I'll just show you what I'm doing and, and then we'll get going. We don't want to have that flying in the air. Okay, that's what we're going to do for a while. I think it'll go pretty fast, but no reason that you have to watch all of that. So I'll be back when we're all sanded up. I stopped sanding at 220 because I'm going to try something. This wood is really soft. But I'm going to put multiple coats of wipe on poly on it and let it soak in and maybe toughen up that grain down here in these corners. And I think it's going to sand a little better as well as the outside. It looks pretty good the way it is, but I always like to try to get them as nice as I can. I'm really going to soak it in there. Yeah, if you can see that better, look at the color in this piece. So I let the wipe on poly sit all night and I've come out here and it sanded up really nice. And uh, I started with 240 and I worked my way to 500 on here. It's really smooth. And I'm going to go ahead and finish it off with wipe on poly. I'll show you the outside and uh, then I'll get the rest of it done. And then we'll be back for the next step, which should be removing the tenon. Isn't that pretty? That is going on so nice after sanding it. So there we are, all the way around. I'll go ahead and get the inside done and I'll see you a bit later. All set to take the tenon off and get this finished. I have my wooden face plate here. I put this piece of scrap on here and I turned it so that this will fit over it with a little clearance. Take a piece of this padded material Just push it on, bring the tail stock up. I want to make sure that it goes down evenly. So this extra scrap here, I'm going to tape that down so it doesn't flop too much. And I'll be right back. Okay, we're all set. I'm going to start out with a half inch bowl gouge and cut most of it away. Running about 620 RPMs. So now we're going to go to a 3 8 spindle gouge.
this whole end of this has got a pretty good size split in it. So I think we're done with that. We'll just curve that off and sand it. Here it is. It's all done. The spalted Norway maple bowl. It has some beautiful grain going on. Starting with this area with no spalting, then you get a little bit, quite a bit more, and you get over to this area here that's just beautiful. A lot of spalting and the colors are just wonderful. I love it. And the inside, look at that. Just as beautiful. It finished ten and a quarter inches in diameter and it's three and a quarter inches tall and the base is five and three quarters in diameter. Once I established the base, I just turned an angle up to here and then made this about a full round. And then I let the rim go clear in here like that. And the walls are about three eighths thick. And of course it's cut underneath into here. I think this might be one of the most beautiful pieces of wood that I've turned. I hope you liked it as well. And a special thanks to Dave for sharing this beautiful piece of wood with me. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And a special thanks to all my subscribers. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. If you're new to my channel and you feel so inclined, please consider subscribing. Thanks again, and until the next time, I'll see you later.